Um, well, I was, thank you so much, everybody. Jenny, I appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry, Alexis Clifton. I was mixing yeah. you up with Alexis Carlton. My That's apologies. what I was going to say. That's what I was very <laughs> animatedly explaining. Yes. <laughs> so I'm sure Alexis Carlson is yes. cooler than I am, but. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy that, you know, all of us Alexis, uh, Alexa, I have to stick together, you know, so very good. Um, so really happy to join in with the this the 24 hour web webathon madness. It's pretty cool. Um, so yes, I know I'm posing as SUNY OER services and open SUNY textbooks here on Zoom, but I am Alexis Clifton and I am the executive director of SUNY OER services. Um, I I'm just kind of walking in blind. I should have come in earlier. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm assuming most people know roughly where New York is, New York State is, but just, just in case I threw the Wikipedia map up there. Um, so, you know, just for a little context. And I like to point out that the, the state is actually quite a bit bigger, thanks Terry, um, than, than the, the city some of you may have heard of or spent many hours in. Um, so my part is mostly out, everything else but the city, um, you know, the eight hours or so that it takes to drive from one end to the other. Um, and just to show you who SUNY is a bit, we got this lovely map, um, all of the campuses. I think, so I've been on this job a little over a year now. I think I recognize most of the campus names when people say them in conversation now, but I still think there's, you know, every once in a while somebody will say a SUNY and I'm like, whoa, that's a new one. Um, so we do have 64 institutions that fall under the SUNY State University of New York umbrella. Um, the biggest chunk of them are community colleges and then we have um, a, quite a large set as well of different types of four-year degree offering institutions. So um, some of those have a couple of master's degree offerings, but primarily they are four-year degree um, uh, institutions we call the comprehensives and our technical colleges. And then we have four university centers scattered throughout the state and I won't I won't claim any favorites, but um, my particular campus where my office is located is right over here, right south of Rochester, New York in Geneseo. Um, so even though SUNY headquarters overall is over here in Albany. Um, so yeah, so I am the executive director of SUNY OER services. We are a support organization for the SUNY system. Um, so, uh, if people put out the OER bat signal, um, we come swooping in, you know, to save the day or um, as the case may be. Um, we, we, we have a lot of um, various hats that we put on, but we are helping campuses implement their own program. We're not running any programs directly ourselves, although we do have some work that we do um, out of our office. Um, the SUNY OER services evolved out of the Open SUNY textbook project. Any, anybody familiar with the OST Open SUNY textbook project or using any of the books in your courses or anything? Um, We're uh, admiring them, Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> there are about 18. We should have one more, hopefully at the end of this week or early next week come off. Um, so they're, they're a wide ranging set of uh, SUNY faculty authored books. Um, the website I should type into the chat here is textbooks.suny.org. Um, so you can get to all of, all of our offerings there. Soon the same website will also host our OER courses across our system, but we're still working on tweaking the last little bit to make that function up and running. So it will have some of the other cool things that we're publishing and talking about coming up here soon. Um, the Open SUNY Textbook Project was an internal SUNY grant funded project, so it is closed. Um, that said, we're not done with publishing. We're just, that's not our primary focus at the moment. The SUNY OER services grew out of that project as an effort to um, shift kind of our our group's attention towards helping faculty implement, adopt, and adapt um, existing OER material, whether it's our, our textbooks or anybody's, you know, we are heavy users of BC Campus, um, you know, and all of the other wonderful resources out there. So, um, yeah, we, like I said, we really serve as a support organization in a lot of different ways. 
Um, before I jump there, so uh, like I said, I personally have been on this job for a little over a year. Um, and I came in right as that transition between the Open SUNY textbooks and the SUNY OER services happened. And when I started this job, <laughs> the goal was um, to work with um, some of our leader institutions that already have pretty robust OER programs going and then slowly build up like a cohort every year, like on a three year cycle of evolving OER programs locally. And then, so I started in February, and then in April, um, we got a huge surprise announcement. Um, our state governor, uh, uh, Mr. Cuomo, uh, announced this Excelsior Scholarship, which some of you may have heard of or are familiar with, that um, is going to be expanded over time, but initially it's a way to offer free in-state tuition to any New York City, uh, New York State resident to any of the State University of New York or City University of New York institutions if your family falls under a particular income level. And it's pretty generous. So um, the Excelsior Scholarship as a whole is that um, getting free college to New York State residents. Included in that announcement was something that nobody really knew was coming. It was, it was kind of the best kind of surprise to wake up to. Um, when they put out the press release for the scholarship overall, there is this sentence in it that said, oh, by the way, <laughs> there will be $8 million towards OER specifically in the scholarship funding. So this money is coming from our state legislation. It's not you know, SUNY or um, campus administered. Um, I agree, Jenny, <laughs> it is qu quite the sentence. Um, we're still kind of trying to wrap our head around the, the, all of the implications of it, I will say that. But um, so now all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's, these are good problems to have. I'm not going to complain it by any means. But um, instead of working with, you know, a few campuses every year, now all of a sudden we're working with all 64 of our institutions who want to participate all at once, go. <laughs> and because this is um, New York State legislation funding, it's by the fiscal year. So we have to use it or lose it essentially. So everything has to be spent out by June 30th. No pressure or anything, you know. So those are the fun, fun places we are right now. So um, some, <laughs> awesome. Unfortunately, um, did I, uh, I didn't include the sentence here. Um, there is some specific language that the, the funding does need to go towards adoption and adaption efforts. So that's, and high enrollment general education courses. Um, I know, yeah, so we're gonna come back to that creation thing. I'm not, I'm not ignoring it and we're not ignoring it as a system. We're just kind of shaping how we're talking about it right now. But, you know, so our huge efforts this past year, this current academic year, are towards getting OER as publicly available and on people's radar as possible. Um, I know you all on this call, I'm gonna go through several slides that everyone on this call probably is very familiar with. Um, I just wanna talk about these, um, you know, in the way that we're talking with our faculty across our system and our librarians and our instructional designers and everybody else on the campus, because we really do have pretty wide ranging input and offerings on these OER campus teams. Um, Terry, I'm still going to hold you to the textbook offer there, so you're not off the hook. Um, so yeah, so our definition as a system of OER really rests on the license. We're not talking about affordability. We're not talking about um, how the materials are accessed. It's all about how materials are licensed or, or um, copyrighted. So public domain, creative commons, and then some of the other open licenses fall into that category. Um, I should say this is slightly different than how CUNY, the city university, is approaching it, but that's okay. They're, you know, we have a friendly competition going, that's okay. Um, and the other big definition that's useful to set out front, um, Again, we're defining a SUNY OER course as a course, um, my magic favorite word of this whole description 
is majority. Whoops, I can't highlight words on the slide, sorry. Um, so the majority of materials in the section resides in the public domain or Creative Commons. Um, yeah, you all know the issues with, with you know, why some courses can't go whole, full steam ahead, all OER, all at once. So that's given us a lot of um, latitude to work across the spectrum of getting a course up and started using OER and then hopefully advancing the, the spectrum of what they're actually using in a course over time. So a quick run through the numbers. We did start with the big giant $8 million. Right off the top, we had to cut it in half because the City University of New York, um, they got half of that in four million, or half of the eight million, so we're, we're down to four million, poor us as a system. Um, so our next step at, within SUNY was to um, call for campuses who wanted to participate. It's purely voluntary, nobody's being forced to do this. And for every campus that raises their hand and says, yes, we want to implement this program, we um, the, the state distributes uh, a starting seed fund of $20,000 to get their program up and running or to advance efforts that are already happening locally at a campus. Um, on top of that, there is additional um, money that comes back to a campus for every student that takes an OER supported course this academic year. Um, so the $8 per student is if a single section or if, you know, just individual sections of a course or of courses over a campus um, switch to OER or are already using OER, um, then $8 per student in those individual sections, again, comes back to the campus. It doesn't go to the faculty teaching. It doesn't go to the students themselves. It comes back to the campus to add to their OER program management fund. The $15 number comes in if every section of a particular course goes OER. So for instance, if a introduction to biology course, every section at a campus um, decides to use an open textbook, it doesn't even have to be the same open textbook, but if every section at that campus goes, then that incentive back to the campus doubles to $15. And we do have some pretty impressive departmental adoptions that have surfaced this year. And Oh, we won't take all the credit for that, but of course, um, it's pretty nice to see that happen. Um, just a few of the, the I, I've got to say for academic funding of programs that I've been involved with, this one's got the fewest strings attached that I've ever seen, and they all make good sense. So um, when campuses sign up for their 20,000 plus whatever student enrollment um, funds they get, they are saying that as a, as a campus, they are going to determine what high enrollment general education courses means locally, because it does vary a bit from institution to institution here. Um, that campus then also agrees that once a course is identified as OER, it will remain OER for the next three years. Doesn't mean it has to use the same material. It does mean that um, it needs to meet that majority openly licensed content definition for three years so that we have enough data to do some meaningful research and analysis at the end. We don't want to promise things or, you know, we don't want to change the world. We, we think good things are going to happen out of this, but we want to make sure that's actually true um, and use that three-year data to, to understand if that's happening. And then the fundings that, that goes to the campuses do have to be invested in some way towards OER efforts. Um, so, you know, we like to say you can't use the money to pay the parking lot outside, but, you know, if you're paying for printing materials or hiring an administrative assistant to run some of these, the, the program management, all of that fa falls into that category. So, um, so we have 64 institutions as a system. 58 of them agreed to say, yes, we are going to take that $20,000 and run with it this year. Right now, as of like early February, 43 are reporting numbers back to us. So by the end of the academic year, everybody will be, but we're just kind of still getting scattered reports at this point. So most campuses have got some reports in. 
Um, and I'm really thrilled to report that so far what we know from those 43 campuses is that over 56,000 students in SUNY are going to take at least one OER course this year. Yeah. Our goal for the end of the year, so this does go through summer of 2018, um, our goal is 80,000. We want to hit that 80,000 number. I think we're pretty well on track to meet it. Um, so fingers crossed, people. And we are calculating um, what we're estimating the student savings cost is. And of our $4 million investment, we can already show that we've saved students over $6.5 million. I'm thrilled by that number, um, but of course I want to go even higher and our goal for the end of the academic year is to show eight million dollars. Yeah, woot woot indeed. Um, so we're, we're aiming for eight million. I think we won't have any problems hitting it. And this is just the single academic year, so we do have a few campuses that have been going strong for several years. Um, we're trying not to cheat and roll their multiple year numbers in there as a whole, so this is just this year. Um, many of my slides here, I'm just going to go through quickly. These are, we've been doing a lot of workshops across our system. I just came back from one yesterday that was fantastic. Um, just again, to, to raise that awareness, get people talking about OER on their local institutions, just to know that this is happening and what it means. So we, we, we really are defining OER as a choice. Um, that it expands the choices that we are able to offer our faculty, our students, and our institutions as a system. That's why it excites us. It makes for better education. It makes for, for better teaching practices. And it makes for better student success. So, um, you know, when we talk to our faculty, we're talking a lot about the permissions that are baked into the license. Again, I know I'm Stop me if I'm not, I, I'm assuming I'm talking to everybody that, you know, is already pretty excited and invested in OER. Um, I'm happy, I will definitely share the slide deck and happy to dive deeper on any of this if anybody wants to talk further. Um, but mostly this is more about how we're kind of passing that message on to our faculty. Um, of course, we live, live by the five R's of OER. Um, and again, we do spend a lot of time talking about the that majority definition obviously we want it to be as higher than 51 percent as we can but um you know 51 percent of the overall course content is where a course starts that's that's going to meet our system definition for what an oer course is um, so we're having a lot of conversations now as a system about the library's role in these and many of our programs i should say the oer programs um, not every campus, but many of the campuses in our system are actually being run out of this, the school libraries. So our librarian teams are very invested in this process. Um, so we want to make sure that library resources are talked about as part of the conversation. Um, open access is also something that's very important to us. So we want to make sure that we clearly define what open access means in relationship to the larger OER projects. And we do still have many courses that are using an open textbook, but still need, um, you know, some kind of low cost or um, copyrighted but uh, accessible kind of homework sets or things like that, online resources. So we want to allow for that in our classes. Um, and, you know, we, we feel like if you're starting with the traditionally copyrighted textbooks that really your course is being driven by those textbooks in an uncomfortable way um, sometimes so that you're either arranging your course in a very you know exactly by the book and following that book's logic in your own course or you end up kind of teaching things in the order that you know that they need to be presented in, but it becomes a confusing mess potentially to your students. And I am totally guilty of this, I should say, when I was a teacher, my, my syllabi looked very similar to this. And then I'd get confused when students read the wrong chapter the wrong week, you know, and looking at this now, I can totally see why and how that happened. And, you know, the examples don't make as much sense if you're reading things out of order, that sort of thing. So if we're looking at it 
from the point of view of starting with open materials, our courses very much are the driving force and then the content is secondary to support the course's needs. And that really is an interesting and exciting conversation that we're having with faculty all across our system. Um, nice little quote from Eddie Watson in there, you know, just kind of as uh, driving that point home. Um, one other thing that I will brag on here, because I'm super thrilled with how this has turned out. I'll type the link in here in the chat too. Um, we have combined, so for the most part, CUNY and SUNY's OER efforts are distinct. We talk to each other a lot. We have very much, um, you know, similar goals. Our approaches to the process is different. The City University is managing everything fairly centrally. So across all of their schools, they're hosting all of their OER projects from the central library and, and putting out um, calls for proposals across the campus. And so we've, done, we've taken a much more distributed approach. But our two systems are collaborating on this website and I am, you know, it's, it's, it's evolving, but I really like how it's being useful to us and putting our faculty front and center, talking about the different avenues towards using OER in our system, uh, both of our systems and really showcasing the new work that is coming out of this. So there are creation projects happening and I love to brag about them. Um, I lost my mouse, sorry. Where did it go? There we go. Um, one other visual that is available in several spots on our website, but I like to throw it up here just because it's very bright and it wakes people up. <laughs> um, uh, we talk a lot about there's no wrong way to do OER, so whatever makes sense in your classroom, feel free to take advantage of many of the, any of the ways to actually put it to use as you can. Um, one of the big um, stumbling blocks, not stumbling, uh, misconceptions perhaps, that some faculty have had and some institutions have had regarding OER is that it's all online and we like to stress really, no, it's not. Um, one of our biggest efforts this year, I meant to have this handy, one second. Um, one of our biggest efforts this year has been actually um, print publications. So we've got these beautiful books um, that we've been working with our SUNY Press to um, get printed and um, distributed to local bookstores. So they are custom for each faculty member, they are custom to each school. And it's still in pilot, but we're really pleased with the impact that the print books are having in our system, as well as all of the digital ways to access the materials. Um, I want to be cognizant of time, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. You know, in terms of talking about the choices that OER empowers for our students, um, you could say that students have lots of choices with traditional textbooks already, but we know many of them are not fun choices to make. They're pretty painful and they're very time consuming to actually navigate the right solution to each textbook that they need to assess. Um, whether or not they even want to buy it or need to buy it, and then if they do, how they get to it. So when you're talking about open textbooks or open course materials, I'll stop, I, I won't go on my ac access code rant here for the time being. Um, so yeah, um, you know, what we're seeing is students are being creative. I love this picture one of my colleagues took, you know, I, the fact that this person is not requesting any specific book. Um, <laughs> I'll need another 30 minutes for the access code rant. So <laughs> I, I will, to be continued, maybe part two, I don't know. Um, but the, going back to this picture, you know, I love the fact that they're not requesting any specific book. They feel like they can, you know, any book would help them out, just give them a book for that content. Um, I think a lot of our students feel that way. And so OER really is answering a huge need we're seeing across our system for just making sure that students are supported in their classes. Um, our libraries are also feeling the heavy burden of supporting um, the textbook crisis overall, you could say. I took this picture at Nassau Community College, um, one of our colleges on Long Island. 
And that, these are three textbooks that were on course reserve for one semester. And you can see they are well-loved books um, that have had to be retired just because, you know, um, they're well-loved. And so that puts a really heavy burden on the library when many of the schools that are choosing to purchase textbooks in support of their students, a significant portion of their purchasing budget actually goes towards textbooks. And, you know, so some of our institutions have made a philosophical choice not to support that textbook purchase. Um, so it's, you can see why. And so that's a big part of why our libraries are so central to this process across our system. Um, you all know and love OpenStax. I, I borrowed the photo that uh, Daniel Williamson shared on Twitter recently of the this OpenStax book he saw in the wild. It's just so great. Um, you know, so when you're talking about open textbooks or open course materials more broadly, what we love is that there's so many different ways to access them and the students can are empowered to pick which they want to get to, what they need for their times that they need to study and how they like to study. So we love that. We also do work with Lumen Learning as a system. So we have um, multiple LMS tools across our system and um, most schools are Blackboard, but not all. And so we really appreciate having the integration um, opportunities through uh, the Pressbooks platform that they use. And we are seeing lots of really cool open pedagogy projects and student creation projects start to bubble up. So um, I'm really excited by this guide and I share it often with lots of faculty. Um, so I'm gonna dash through my last slides because I want, you know, if you've got questions, please throw them out there. I, you know, I like to brag on some of our schools doing great things, um, amazing increases in, in retention rates, um, in success rates. Oops, I went a little fast there. So Tompkins Cortland is one of our really early adopters of OER and they are one of the strongest programs in our system. I love to brag on them. Herkimer College right now, almost a quarter of their total student population is taking an OER course um, this semester. So they've gone huge really fast. We have five campuses that are participating in the Achieving the Dream program. So hopefully within the next year or so, um, I think Tompkins Cortland and Monroe both have their program actually already running. Um, and so the others within the next year will be up and running too. The full degree pathway will be available. And those are what we want to publish on the Open SUNY textbook site um, when, uh, the, when we get the, the website tweaked. Um, we want to be able to share the courses that are coming out of these development programs in that way. Um, and then we're starting to see um, schools actually market around this. So this is um, from SUNY Orange, one of our community colleges downstate. Um, they've actually started marketing their OER program as you know, a recruitment, recruitment tool locally. So we really find that these conversations bring a lot of different people on the campus together in really exciting and interesting ways. So we're thrilled by what's happened this year and hope to go you know, carry the momentum that we've seen started this year into the next several years and go back to the, including creation as a core component of that as well. So I'm uh, sorry, that's, that's where I wanted to end. And two minutes, yay, okay. So um, I will put my email in the chat here too. Um, yeah. That's me. Great, Alexis. We probably have time for maybe one question if anyone wants to ask. And otherwise, because uh, Alexis is sharing her contact info, you can reach out to her directly and ask some questions as well. 